All right. Hey, everybody. It's Katie Harris, uh, owner and CEO of Nurse Nurse, and I'm here with Dr. Dan Cousin and Dr. Lev Grinman from Doctors for Providers. You guys look all relaxed and laid back and everything good. <laughs> yeah, just chilling on penicillin. Chilling on penicillin, are you sick? Um, all right, so if you guys have questions that you want to ask um, the, the guys about medical directors, uh, we are here for you. We're here to talk about medical directors and what's going on in the world. Um, I know we've had... Uh, a lot of questions again about um, the state of California and then the state of New York came up uh, this past week as well. Um, it looks like it's a similar scenario to, to California. Um, can you guys kind of just talk about that again? Like what, what do people kind of need in place um, before calling you um, to get a medical director? Um, so, I mean, essentially, I mean, yeah, from what we, what we understand about New York and California is that they require, um, physician ownership is that both states consider IV hydration practice of medicine. So they want there to be a professional corporation or PC, um, in California, if I'm correct, it's a physician has to own 51% of the practice in New York. It has to be hundred percent physician ownership. Now, having said that, that doesn't mean that the physician has to take all the income from the practice just because they're hundred percent owner of the PC. It's very standard for, uh, companies to try to, um, open medical practices and work around these rules. Um, essentially you can create sometimes what can be done is a creation of a medical, uh, a management company, uh, that works with the physician's corporation, uh, and can then decide how the income is going to be divided. So essentially the physician can still, at the end of the day, the physician can still be paid normally as a medical director would without ownership. It's just a decision that has to be made on your part. It doesn't have to be divided based on physician's ownership percentage of the company. Uh, so at least what we, uh, what we personally have done in these states is we um, have worked with practices that have set up in California and New York, and we have offered medical directors for those states who are willing uh, to, um, to be the on paper owner of these companies and help with, with, with that as well. So, um, there's a separate fee associated with that, with us sourcing a physician. Um, but it's, uh, it's definitely doable. All right. So a, a separate fee. So if you source the physician that that's going to be the 51% owner or in New York, the hundred percent owner, um, that's, that's different. Yes, it's different. I typically, we charge about $5,000 a year for, uh, sourcing a physician for that type of practice. Um, sometimes that could be, uh, paid up front. Sometimes there could be a, instead of paying it up front, it could be a, um, $500 a month, which works out to about $6,000 a year. But if you don't want to pay it all up front, you could do it. You can pay it monthly, um, over the course of a year and it renews every year. Um, the advantage of Again, working with us is also that we uh, guarantee a medical director if something doesn't work out with the first person for whatever reason, we can find you somebody else who's willing to do the same arrangement. Yeah, that's huge. I was just talking to somebody about that too because they're like, oh, should I go, um, you know, where should I get my medical director? And I said, I would definitely go with medical for, uh, doctors for providers because of that reason, you know, your whole business could get shut down. Um, yeah. And We've seen that before where people have come to us in a panic saying, you know, I went out on my own and I found somebody that was willing to help me out. Um, all of a sudden they don't want to do it anymore. And I can't just, I can't order my supplies. I can't continue practicing. It's, it's a, it's a big, it's a big issue if you run into that, unfortunately. Okay. So now this physician that, uh, that you guys source as a separate, did they serve as the medical director as well? Like that's all. Kind of yes, they would serve. Correct. They would serve as the medical director as well. All right. So if you paid monthly, it would be the 500 plus the 750. Exactly. So, so it would be, it wouldn't be 750. No. So there would be no $750 fee. If the, because it's a little bit more of a complicated situation where the physician, because the physician owns the, um, the PC on paper, we would actually let the physician and the practice, uh, discuss the monthly fees due to the physician. Um, you know, based on what they're comfortable with or what their cash flow may be. So we'll allow the physician and the practice to discuss what the monthly compensation for the physician would be uh, together after we connect them. 
So okay. because every situation is different um, and there it's a little bit because there's more details, it's a little more detail oriented. Um, we allow them to discuss that together. Okay. Um, just a quick note that nothing that we're saying uh, here, you know, we're, we're not actually lawyers. We just pr play lawyers on television. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we're not telling people how to, uh, we're not telling people legal advice here, but um, this is just from our experience, what we know. Um, I saw this Friends episode a long time ago where Jovi Triviani was a, 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 a doc, you know, he plays a doctor. He's like, I'm not really a doctor. I just play one on television. So that's what we're doing. <laughs> no, and it's important because like, you know, the nurses, they need the information and they want the information. And um, what we can do is share our experience, but that doesn't, that can't pertain to you specifically. It's kind of like the practice of medicine almost like statistically, this may happen. It might not happen, but you know what? It <laughs> yeah, we're, yeah, exactly. And we're just sharing what our understanding is after speaking to some attorneys and, and some people who've been involved with this. And so obviously we always recommend the safest thing to do. And we know it's not the cheapest thing to do is to talk to it, to have an attorney retained when you're opening a practice, you're protecting yourself ultimately at the end of the day. So it's always good to check with an attorney before you commit to anything. Okay. And so this physician that's sourced, like that does not include like the legal fees of setting up the business. No, absolutely not. Okay. All right. Just so that everybody's clear um, on, on that. Um, okay. So do you guys want to talk a little bit about what medical directors do? And if anybody listening has questions, please put them in the comments um, and I will make sure all your questions get answered. Uh, so, I mean, medical directors can do a number of different things. It all depends on the comfort level of the person running the, the practice or the business and, you know, what the state requirements may be. Um, medical director can certainly oversee any orders that are written. A medical director should be able to sign off if, if a state, for example, some states may prefer or ask that a patient be evaluated in some form before a uh, medication is administered. So that in many instances that can be done with, through asynchronous telemedicine um, where a patient doesn't necessarily have to have a, a, a live telemedicine visit, but where a patient's history is taken or in patient may perhaps make a short video presentation of what's going on with them. And the, the physician, the medical director can then after hours um, look over that history and physical and sign off on it and, and then, you know, sign off on the order of what the patient's uh, IV hydration should look like. Um, some We've had instances where the uh, medical director and the, um, the RN running the practice will sit down and, and talk about the formulation for different therapies uh, before they make them as part of their regular protocol. Um, they may sit down and talk about when is it appropriate to have open orders um, on patients and what they should look like. So all of those things should be part of what a medical director should be able to do. All right. Okay. Awesome. And, and your docs, uh, they tend to specialize in IV hydration and med spa, right? Um, we have doctors who specialize in a lot of different things, but the ones who we refer for IV hydration typically have uh, experience with IV hydration and have already been medical directors uh, in IV hydration. Some of them specialize in telemedicine, may have multiple state licenses and have done this um, for multiple IV hydration practices. Okay. Uh, and I know we had talked about, uh, you know, because the the information about um, setting up the legal entity, which is out of the scope of your practice and my practice, um, but, you know, just talking about getting lawyers to help us navigate this field because it is so important. But sure. um, I'm just kind of wondering off the cuff, just because I just had a conversation with a nurse about this, um, whether... Um, there's any directory that you know of where people can go to find this information. Uh, she was in Wisconsin and, you know, I'm like, that's, I'm not sure that's on the top of our list of, of states to yeah. explore, but, yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, I don't know if there's an, unfortunately, I don't know if, you know, unfortunately lawyers don't make it easy for other people to find information so <laughs> they don't have to pay them. So I think that might be part of it as to why these things are so difficult to find. Um, I know that it's, sometimes it's easier, unfortunately, to find things re relating to nurse practitioner, physician assistant practices, like the AMA has certain things laid out, uh, and those are easy to find for our ends. It could be a little bit more challenging, but we're always looking to see if there's something that's out there. Um, 
you know, we've, we've just, in, you know, uh, been talking to people about like asynchronous telemedicine, what certain states allow and do not allow. Uh, but it's, you know, there isn't always one place you can look to find like where to go, unfortunately. Yep. Uh, and for that asynchronous practice, uh, can you talk a little bit about what that looks like? And I think from my understanding is, and I personally have not done asynchronous telemedicine for my own practice, so I'm still learning a little bit about it. But my understanding of it is, is that um, one of the ways that it can be done is that a patient can um, videotape themselves on their phone, for example, or through some sort of proprietary portal, uh, basically talk about what their symptoms are, what their presentation is, what their history is. Um, they do not necessarily have to be examined by anybody. It's basically just the patient saying, hey, this is what I have. Um, this is, I'm tired all the time. And I, this is my medical history. Um, and I think I can benefit from so-and-so. Um, and then a physician can take that information, look it over, probably also a patient, probably I assume most of the time will fill out a questionnaire going through their medical history, what medications they're currently on, um, maybe their surgical history as well. And then based on those two things, based on their presentation, the physician can then say, okay, this is an appropriate uh, patient for this type of prescription, which I think IV hydration would qualify as a prescription. Right. Okay. Yeah. Um, and do, which states are, are requiring that, do you know? or is um, I don't know if they're re necessarily requiring it. I think it's a matter of whether a state um, accepts it or not. I think most states accept asynchronous telemedicine. I don't off the top of my head know which ones require it and which ones do not require it. I just know that most of them find it sufficient. Um, I, From what I read, there's some states like New Jersey, which require a live, from what I read, require a live, uh, like a patient actually has to be um, examined before uh, asynchronous telemedicine essentially would not be sufficient. Um, they would have to have an actual exam before something can be uh, administered. But again, I'm not an attorney and that's, you know, I've read this and that based on something somebody gave me, uh, but that, that's my understanding from what I read. Right, right. Um, so Tina, um, and I guess you can address this, it says, you know, 750 is a bit high for just starting out. Can we get a reduced rate for the first three months to allow us to make some sales? So what we offer is for the first month of service is uh, if you're just ordering supplies, we offer a 50% off for the first month. Yeah. And I, you know, honestly, I, I, you know, I know it, it feels when you're not making any money, everything feels like you're shooting a, a fire hose and all the money is like pouring out the window. And it, it, it definitely feels that way um, when you first get started in any business. Um, and so, but in the bigger scheme of things, uh, I honestly think 750 is pretty inexpensive, to be honest. Um, when we, when I worked for Walmart, we hired physicians at $1,500 and they didn't actually have to do anything, which was really nice. Um, but that was, that was the going rate. Uh, and that was five years ago, um, $1,500 being the market rate for this. Yeah. I mean, doctors did have to go to, you know, a lot of training and, you know, <laughs> well, it's also your license that's, that's on the line, even if no sales are, are being made. Um, so yeah. it's a lot of responsibility. Yeah. That's, that's the biggest risk. Process. That's the, yeah, I think that's the biggest issue with doctors, you know, being offering their license for uh, medical directorships is that there, if something does go wrong, their license could still be on the line. And I think, I think, I think that's why they're getting paid more, um, you know, relatively per hour than what you would think they should get paid in some of these instances, but there's definitely a risk involved. Yeah. And there's the setup costs too. Um, you know, the, all this stuff has to be set up beforehand and then yeah. being able to order the supplies and, and whatnot. Um, I mean, it's, it's vital. Yeah. Um, let's see, what else can we talk about? What questions do you guys have? Um, let me ask you guys this for, you know, cause I know quite a few people have come through your system, um, is there something that you wish that uh, we had prepped the nurses beforehand or that they had in place before they got to you or does everything seem to be running smooth on your end? Um, I mean, I think that it's mostly running smooth. I think, I mean, obviously everybody's different in their level of sophistication or how they're ready they are to be a business owner. Uh, but I think you guys do a really good job in preparing these nurses. Um, we, I, I don't think, and I, I haven't had any significant feedback from our staff who are working with the nurses every day to help them get set up. 
Um, so I, I personally don't have any point pointers, additional pointers. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, I have a Facebook user that there's there's no name to it, so you must not be signed in, but it says a few of us were told that there would be half off the first month and then we were charged the full price. Anything we can do? Um, I'm pretty sure if, if if there would have been, I mean, it's pr pretty clearly explained in the contract and that's something we discuss. Uh, you could certainly write to us and let us know if that happened, if you work with us exactly. I'm pretty sure we're, we're not trying to overcharge anybody if 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 you we were to, if you were told that you're going to get half off the first month and you weren't please touch base with us and we'll make sure you'll get refunds if that was the case and it's in the contract yeah and that's what i i really like working um with you guys with um you know because there is that level of integrity and if there is a an issue you know we know that doctors or providers will address it uh, just like on our end and that's why i asked you that question if there was stuff that you want us to do to prep nurses um, because it's important to us that this all goes really smoothly or as smoothly as possible there's always going to be kinks and obstacles and and challenges along the yeah way. yeah and exactly and and it's and as far as the first month being 50 percent off it's in situations where a nurse is just ordering supplies and is not actually seeing patients that's why we do the courtesy 50 percent off because we understand that the pay that the practice is just getting starting off the ground. So and if there's no patients to be seen, there's no cash flow. So we completely understand that. So if that's something that you discuss with us and that's it would be in the contract as well. Uh, so again, if that was discussed with you and, and wasn't honored, again, we're more than happy to, to talk to you about it. And ideally, where, um, how far in advance would you want somebody to potentially co contact you guys? Um, ideally, I think it's it's always good to have at least a 30 day notice if you're getting everything all your you know sort of ducks in a row. Um, we have done these things where we've actually literally matched somebody up in two days. Uh, anything is possible where our physicians are very responsive. We have our processes in place so that we can get it done very quickly. However, because the world is not perfect and not perfectly elastic, things there's gonna be issues that come up with just starting up a, with a practice off the ground. So there's, lawyers can take time looking over paperwork, rental stuff can take time. So there could always be hiccups. Uh, so that's why it's always good to give yourself some leeway with time. So that's why we usually recommend that, you know, at least you give yourself at least 30 days. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's reasonable. And, and you're right. They, we used to have that problem in academics. Like we would send off this very basic contract. And it's the same contract every single time. The lawyers would spend like, sometimes they'd spend a day. Sometimes they'd spend six weeks looking over the like, Yeah, like, it's very unpredictable, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, it is. Um, and plus, if everybody sent in, you know, request for two days, uh, you know, a two-day notice for a medical director, it would be like insane. Um but yeah, and ideally for those of you getting ready, um, you should have a launch date um, and know when you're going to officially open the doors. You can certainly order your supplies maybe even two weeks prior. I mean, it would be even worth it to me to like make sure I have the medical director get that license on your vendor um, supply chain so that you can actually order it. Um, and then just you can have them rush to you like it's um, if you needed to, but especially for the first order that might be worth something. Um, all right, yeah. If you guys have uh, more questions, that's what we got. Dr. Cousin and Dr. Grimman here. Uh, let's see. Hello, I just teamed up with you. I was matched within one day. Oh, that was pretty fast. Oh, good to know. Good to know. So, so we're, we're, we're we're not exaggerating two days. So we could even do it in one day. <laughs> <laughs> we can do it like. Yeah, spot. we can do it in our sleep, but no, we, but, but again, we, you know, we pride ourselves on our service and, but, you know, again, um, doctors can be busy. There could be a lot of different issues with connecting people. So, um, again, it's, it's, it's still a good idea to, to get a head start, but, but thank you for that. Uh, yeah. And she said the process is very smooth at the moment. I'm ordering supplies. I did receive half off. Thank you. Uh, another one for California. I know there's a flat 5k rate and we pay the doctors. What is the 5k covering? Like five k covers it. it's sort of a sourcing fee on our end. We get it's very difficult to find a physician who's knowledgeable about all corporate ownership and it, and would agree to own a corporation and not take all of the profit. So what we do is we find you a qualified physician who would uh, agree to work with you. Um, and we guarantee that we would find your replacement physician if something doesn't work out. and that's really what 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 that entails. 
Okay, and I don't know if you can answer this question, but what type of attorney would I be looking for? Uh, definitely a healthcare attorney. It has to be an attorney that specializes in healthcare and should be licensed in the state where you're practicing. Yeah, I think that's the other person we need to get in here as an attorney. A hundred percent. Let's get one in. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm asking. <laughs> let's, reel, let's, let's reel one in. <laughs> I yeah, uh, let's see. Uh, this is a godsend. It took me almost a year to find a medical director. Yeah, I was so stressed out about it because I'm like, I know these nurses need medical directors. And, I, you know, I had I was putting ads in, on Indeed, but like you don't know what you're going to get, you know, like right. you don't know if they know what they're doing or who they are. So it was like and I would get like, I don't know, like almost 50 to 100 physicians to respond to me. And then it was just like. Oh my God, I've got to sort through all of this and, and find out who's. Yeah. And we, and we go through a screening process as well for different two ways. One is, you know, we, we do ask the physicians to have any significant history of malpractice or things like that, that could increase, you know, if somebody were to add a physician to their malpractice, for example, if that's required, uh, we certainly don't want to use a physician that would add to a significantly to the cost of running a practice. And number two, through experience, sometimes we start working with a physician and we find out that they're not very responsive or they're not what they thought we were they were going to be when we first started working with them. So we take them off our database. We don't want to work with a doctor who does not work well with our clients. So, um, we, you know, the longer we are in this field, the more we can screen um, our own physicians. And so you, you have a much better quality doctor um, as opposed to just going out and finding one on your own, knowing nothing about them. Yeah, absolutely. And someone says we need a lawyers for providers group. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that's what we need. Lawyers for nurses. That will be, that's what we need. Yeah. Um, as, and somebody says, do we pay 5k yearly or just one time? Uh, so it's, it's 5k yearly. Uh, and the, the reason it's yearly is because we sort of, again, it's, uh, it's a process and we guarantee that we would find your replacement physician. So it's, it's a yearly fee. Okay. And Tiffany says, I had trouble with the beginning of the call, if this is a repeat, but the monthly fee for California, I see 750 at the top. So again, California, the 750 is only for states that are, do not require physician ownership. So in California, you would work out a fee separately with the physician um, and different physicians have different expectations for what they want to be paid for this type of work. So uh, unfortunately, we can't give you a specific number, but it's not 750. Okay. And there would be a $5,000 sourcing fee that can be paid up front uh, at the start of the, uh, the relationship before you meet your physician, or it could be $500 a month paid monthly. Uh, and, it, and both fees renew every year for, for us for sourcing a physician for you. Uh, yeah, sourcing a physician for you. Okay. So now if they were able to find a physician to run that um that corporation then and they just needed the medical well i guess if a physician is going to own the physician would be their medical director so okay so yeah. I, okay so they're probably not going to get any cheaper anywhere um and this is on top so the and this is on top of the 5k so it's mm -hmm. the 5k is for uh, maintaining the physician in the corporation and then you would pay um a the practice would pay the physician separately yes unfortunately it is more expensive we wish it was cheaper but again if you work it out it's 500 a month on our end or cheaper if you pay it up front, um, more like 450, whatever it is for, for our fees. And then you can work it out with the physicians. Physicians can some, some, sometimes be understanding and not charge as much in the beginning when you're waiting for your cash flow to improve uh, when you have a lot of upfront costs. So that could actually be more beneficial um, than, than paying a certain fee every month, even from the start. So uh, there's pluses and minuses. Okay. And this would be the same for New York. New York, yes. Okay. All right. All right. Well, what other questions do you guys have? And and uh, Dan and Love, if you have anything that you want to uh, throw in here, that would be awesome too. Dan, you have any jokes? <laughs> well, uh, no pressure. No pressure. You just have to be good. Yeah. Uh, I just wanted to make a note before when we're talking about asynchronous communication, just to make sure everyone knows it's not asynchronous communication, it's asynchronous communication. <laughs> Sir, in case anyone was confused by that. Different times. Yep. As one word, different times. So a patient can be seen at one time, the doctor can see the patient's presentation at another time. Right. 
I can review it another time. Is there a, is there a, a time frame around that? Like, to I'm not 100% sure. And I think maybe by our next call, maybe next month, I'll have even more information. I'm still learning about it. It's sort of still a new thing to me. Uh, to us, we're still learning about it because we've been getting some questions about it. But I'll, I'll maybe I'll put something together where we, we can understand. Um, I don't necessarily mm -hmm. think it necessarily has to be like same within six hours or 12 hours. It's it's probably has to be at least within the f one day, but I, I don't know for sure. Okay. Uh, Tiffany says, do you have a good pool of California docs? We have several that, that have done this. So I would say yes, absolutely. And we, we have done this in California a few times or more than a few times. Uh, somebody says, is it still free for placement? So outside of California and New York, where the physician is required to own uh, yep. part of the business, all are part of the business, yep. the placement piece of it is- There's no right, exactly. So in, in, in situations where there's no physician ownership involved and it's just $750 a month, there is no sourcing fee, which is what we pride ourselves on. We will find you a doctor and we want you to approve of that doctor. We will not charge you anything until your collaboration starts. Okay. And let's see, somebody asked the rates in Florida and then do they vary or? They they... Just, I think Florida should be 750 also per month. Okay. And somebody says they need somebody, you know, they need a provider in Ohio. Uh, can you we have, at, at, at Ohio? Ohio? yes, and we have, we have providers. So the providers, most of the, the, uh, the physicians, most of the time do not have to live in the same state. Uh, this is very few states that require physicians to also be in that state. Um, so a lot of times our physicians have multiple state licenses. They may be in another state, but that shouldn't be an issue for you at all. Um, but we, we have multiple physicians, well, probably a few that are in Ohio and multiple that have Ohio state licenses. Out right. of a joke. Oh. <laughs> I'll talk to you quickly. Go ahead. Okay, so uh, patient goes to, to the uh, you know, advanced practice provider, um, and says, I'm having this bowel movement issue and, uh, it gets prescribed to take these suppositories, um, for, you know, one a day for a week, come back in a week. It's still a problem comes back next week, still having problems. And they say, okay, double the dose, um, come back and, uh, still a problem comes back next week. So still having a problem, so triple the dose comes back the following week. So I'm still having my, the, the bowel movement problems. And uh, advanced practice writer says, well, you've been taking the suppositories like I asked you to, right? And patient says, yeah, what am I going to do? Shove them up my butt? <laughs> <laughs> I, have an, I actually have a similar joke, which I don't know how we got off topic like this, but I have a similar joke. How do you know that, how do you know that diarrhea is hereditary? I don't know. It runs in your genes. Oh, <laughs> we're gonna get. I'm gonna have some pistol. This is becoming really classy, really quickly. <laughs> uh, do, the, uh, the <laughs> do the physicians visit the business to sign and review orders, or do they work remotely? I guess uh, they 99% of the time they work remotely. There's really no need to to visit the business. We do have a couple of spa directors um, that we've worked with previously, and still do. Who like to visit the place of business like i mean one example i know that somebody in, that we have in florida who's been visiting the med spa uh in person but i don't think that's required in florida there's a certain mileage requirement but that's just something that they personally like to do and i think that's great on their end uh but uh most of the time their physicians do not visit the site probably okay. good to just go and have them come by and take a picture at the center and put it on the wall or something yeah, you no know, it, it's absolutely not a bad idea it's definitely something that it would be cool if they can do that uh, yeah. but you know uh, plus it builds a relationship you know yeah like, absolutely know what the person looks like yeah. Post absolutely our medical director <laughs> yeah <laughs> um and then you know i know you guys have thousands of, uh, or at least a thousand or somewhere around there physicians. And so somebody's saying, and this might be Jamie, does Wisconsin have a decent pool or do you find it challenging? Um, and I think of I know, I know we have Wisconsin licensed physicians. I don't know how many off the top of my head I'd have to go check, but, um, Is that a I'm, compact state or anything? Like, I'm sorry. Do you guys do compact states? Like do you For like physicians? Like yeah, like if a physician has a license. Yeah, and so so, so it's, it's a choice. So the physicians decide on their own whether or not they want to be part of the compact. The compact is something that makes it easier for doctors to get licenses in other states. And a lot of our doctors sort of multi-state license are part of the compact. I know I am personally part of the compact for what I do. So, and that allows you, there's certain states that allow you to get licensed very quickly within a matter of weeks. Wisconsin may be one of those states. 
Um, so a lot of our doctors are part of the compact of the okay. physician about state compact. Okay. Uh, and it's still about around 750 a month for Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. It would be the same. Yeah. yeah. Wouldn't be. Right. Any different. Uh, in Ohio, the doctor. But only if you give us, only if you give us some cheese. Yeah. You have to like cheese. <laughs> <laughs> Can't be lactose yeah. intolerant. <laughs> I was walking past the cheese store. I live in South Philly, so we have like really nice cheese plate. I'm like, oh my God, I, I, you do not need a round of cheese. Just keep keep walking. Um, <laughs> in Ohio, the doctor has to be present for us to mix. It's a statement more than a question, but I'll ask it as a question. I actually don't know that for a fact. If the doctor has to be, I, I will have to double check that. I'm not sure. I've not, I have not heard that before, but I wouldn't be I I'm not sure if that's if that's fact or not. Yeah, so I think, you know, we had a, a call about that because the Department of Pharmacy or the whatever uh, seems to regulate over IV hydration mm -hmm. in the state of Ohio, and uh, they've decided that if you're going to mix, that there needs to be a provider of sorts in at present, like present when it's done. Um, I think uh, there's some workarounds with it, like if you right. do an injection one at a time, that's somehow not mixing. I don't know how, but, you know, but... Yeah, that just came up like August, September it just came out. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Which definitely makes the state of Ohio. And I started putting this stuff right. on my website too, because I, you know, I wanted people to make sure that they come in with full knowledge of what they're coming into. Um, but yeah, in Ohio, we put that a provider needs to be on site. Okay. And the provider could be a nurse practitioner or physician mm -hmm. assistant, I assume. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Um. All right, guys. Well, we, uh, we're going to have doctors or providers come into this group and talk to you guys uh, frequently. If you do have questions, we can always reach out to them. Uh, you don't have to wait for the next call next month. Um, you know, they're here to talk to you. Um, how much would what be? Somebody just wrote, how much would it be? Um, but you can absolutely post any questions and Kimball or Crystal or I will we'll reach out to doctors or providers and make sure we get your questions. The 750 is a general rate for your group, or is it a special rate for nurse printers? Well, we so we actually started that rate after we started working together with nurse printers, and now we offer it to everybody uh, because we think that that's that's just fair. Uh, but you know, we'd like to thank Katie for for helping us realize that that was that was the right thing to do, and um, so that is the rate we offer to everybody right now. Oh, but, if you, but, if, but if you but if you mention nurse printers, we'll we'll give you a high five. <laughs> How much, and so the question was, how much would it be to come on site in Ohio? And that would be something that you. That's would... that's something we. So that would be a special relationship that, or a special situation where we would have to talk to a doctor who probably lives in Ohio. Um, I can almost certainly guarantee it's not going to be seven hundred fifty dollars a month. Um, we would we would we'd have to see. Right. We'd I mean, it might it have to be. I you know I know that there's bags that are pre mixed, and you know you might have to limit your selection, of what you offer, um, and get the pre mixed bags. And I'm not sure how um, reasonable or feasible that is. So the, I think those are going to be questions that we need to post to to Kimball and, and Crystal and help to to work that because otherwise you do like. I mean, you can't really have walk-ins. You have to have somebody, you have to have your patient scheduled and then have like a nurse practitioner. And the nurse practitioner is probably going to charge you something like- Now I'm thinking Now I'm thinking out loud. Do you think it would be possible for a nurse to go on site to the doctor's office, mix it in their office with them present, as opposed to having the doctor pr go to them, they go to the doctor to make it easier? Well, so um, Ohio wants to be extremely difficult and there's okay. like a time frame. So you have to, it okay. has to be delivered within like an hour of mixing. Oh, goodness. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. okay. Oh, that's so complicated. Okay. Yeah. They're making it really, really complicated. So we're, yeah. we're looking. So, yeah, I mean, maybe that's something that we can talk about next month as well um, as you guys kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Dig into Absolutely. Ohio and stuff. Yeah. Cool. All right. Um, again, you know, please feel free to, to add questions and we'll talk to you guys next month. Thank you so much. Thanks very much, nurse printers, for having us on the call. Good times. <laughs>